thing, man, man. You, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it, and you did. No, no, no. I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna, if we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed, at all. I, I should look like. Amidst the recent allegations, individuals are stepping forward to share their perspectives. In the latest development, Kevin Hart has made accusations against Diddy, claiming that he was pressured into engaging in unconventional activities with Usher and Justin Bieber. So without any further ado, let's get started to know what's really happening. Certainly, if there's a clear indicator of Diddy being perceived as a manipulator, it's when a former artist under his wing expresses discontent. This is precisely the situation with Maze, one of his past collaborators. In the upcoming video, you can witness Mace visibly angered and frustrated with Diddy. No exaggeration, just observe for yourself. Yo, how dare this nigga tell me he want receipts? Let's start with your mother. Your mother got the receipts. Thing is in your mother's name. Now, many rappers and singers have been his victim, including Usher and Justin Bieber. The revelations came amid the lawsuit filed by Cassie. In a lawsuit filed in 2013, Diddy is alleged to have orchestrated a freak-off event, causing substantial damages to the hotel amounting to tens of thousands of dollars. The legal document asserts that Cassie, at the time, was tasked with arranging the venue and hiring male individuals for these gatherings. Reportedly, she was directed to utilize websites and escort services to locate men with specific attributes. The lawsuit claims that Diddy insisted on these encounters on a weekly basis, consistently referring to them as our thing and emphasizing the need for secrecy. Oh, she didn't want it, but Cassie, who searched for the big black, and she was searching for the big black. Cassie asserted that the alleged freak-offs frequently occurred in hotel suites, with venues ranging from the Trump International Hotel in Columbus Circle to L'Hermitage Beverly Hills, the London Hotel in Los Angeles, and various intercontinental hotels across the country. According to her claims, Diddy's assistants were purportedly involved in facilitating these events by supplying items such as baby oil and lubricant. The lawsuit states, Mr. Combs always supplied Ms. Ventura and the S worker with copious amounts of D before and during the FOs. Ms. Ventura was given ecstasy, C, GHB, ketamine, M, and A in excessive amounts during FOs, which allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after an FO to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her. She claimed Diddy would ask her to pour excessive amounts of oil over herself before he instructed her and the S workers what to do. Mr. Combs would say things like, grab that big black D and ask her, how does it feel? As he directed her to perform for him, the lawsuit states, Diddy allegedly used his phone, laptop, and tablet to film. They freak offs, treating it like a personal art project and adjusting the lighting. Shawn Puffy Combs, with a career spanning over three decades in the music industry, has long been associated with rumors of hosting all-men parties. Recently, Twitter users have speculated about the possibility that Puffy could have played a role in grooming Usher. A TikTok video has surfaced, incorporating interviews with various rappers and singers discussing Puff Daddy's rumored all-men parties across different platforms. The video begins with an interview featuring Jamie Foxx, who talks about Sean Puffy Combs' alleged secret parties, suggesting that they involved young men. So I followed him the whole time. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel, filming this, and it's a pool party that is ridiculous. Rappers like 50 Cent have mocked Puffy, particularly in reference to the all-men parties he reportedly organized, including instances involving younger men, such as Usher's experience at Flavor Camp. In an interview on The Howard Stern Show, Usher discussed his early days in New York City, living with Puff Daddy as a teenager, and shed light on the parties and celebrations at the so-called Flavor Camp. During the Howard Stern interview, Usher touched on his exposure to the lifestyle without delving into specific details. He hinted at the wild nature of these events, expressing uncertainty about whether he would fully participate and indulge in them. I moved to New York City 
and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor King. Upon signing with LaFace Records as a teenager, Usher found mentorship in Sean Combs, also known as Puff Daddy. At the age of 14, Usher relocated to New York to collaborate with Diddy, blending work and social experiences. Beyond their professional endeavors, Diddy allowed Usher to partake in his lavish gatherings, aiming to infuse the young singer with a more edgy persona. In a 2011 interview, Usher, who currently serves as a mentor to Justin Bieber, shed light on Diddy's desire for him to embrace a more edgy image. Reflecting on the experience, Usher acknowledged that while Diddy's vision may not have led to immediate success with his first album, it set the stage for an enduring 18-year career. This insight guides Usher in his mentorship of Justin Bieber, emphasizing the importance of making music relevant to the current times. Additionally, L.A. Reid, the CEO of Layface Records, disclosed that Diddy played a pivotal role in persuading him to retain the young Usher on the label when considerations were made to drop the budding star. He said, I wanted to drop him. I wanted to be out of business with him. I broke his heart. I broke his mother's heart. It was a very tough period in both our lives, he added. Then someone said to me, don't be a fool. Don't sell your stock in Usher. He's still going to be a star. He's everything you thought he was the day you signed him. And that person was Diddy. Michael Jackson played a crucial role in Usher's artistic evolution. Usher openly acknowledged the significant impact of the King of Pop on his career. One poignant moment in their connection occurred when Usher performed Larry Grossman and Buzz Cohan's Gone Too Soon at Michael Jackson's memorial service in 2009, following the icon's untimely death. Usher described this experience as one of the most conflicted moments of his life, underscoring the emotional weight and honor of paying tribute to his mentor and musical inspiration. He said, That was the hardest yet most gratifying moment of my career. The song summed up what people were feeling as nobody believed Michael had passed. He was such an iconic figure, icons like him live forever. Throughout his illustrious career, Usher has achieved remarkable success boasting nine number one songs on the prestigious Billboard Hot 100 chart. A significant milestone occurred with his fourth album, Confessions, where Usher made history as the third artist ever to simultaneously hold three songs on the Hot 100. This album marked a turning point in his career, selling a remarkable 1.1 million copies in its inaugural week and securing Usher the Grammy Award for Best Contemporary R&B Album. Say you never leave. Confessions further solidified its place in music history by becoming the second best-selling album in the United States during the 2000s decade. The album's phenomenal success is evident in its RIAA Diamond certification, denoting sales of over 10 million copies in the U.S. alone and a global sales figure of 20 million copies. Usher's impact on the music scene is underscored by his impressive tally of over 50 appearances on the Billboard Hot 100, earning him the well-deserved moniker of the Prince of R&B. However, this did not stop the rumors. There have been rumors circulating online that Sean Diddy also gave Usher Raymond a S-transmitted disease, STD, when he was 15 years old. The source of these rumors is unclear, but some speculate that they are based on Usher's admission that Diddy used to take him to wild parties when he was a young teen. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop. There is no credible evidence supporting the claim that Diddy gave Usher any S transmitted diseases, STDs, or engaged in any S contact with him. Usher has been embroiled in legal battles facing accusations of infecting partners with herpes, but he has consistently denied these allegations and resolved most cases through out-of-court settlements. Regarding Diddy, there is no public comment on the rumored relationship with Usher. Diddy himself has encountered legal issues, including his involvement in a nightclub shooting in 1999 and an A on his son's football coach in 2015. Much evidence has implied that Diddy coerced Usher into participating in inappropriate activities or had an obsession with specific themes. There was a lawsuit by a young woman, a fan, 
who slept with Usher after meeting him at one of his shows. The woman won a court victory proving that Usher knowingly gave her an STD. There is a video out with P. Diddy, Usher and Kevin Hart, where Diddy lets it slip out, probably intentional to embarrass Usher, that the two of them wake up in the morning and fight over cornflakes. P. Diddy implies that he and Usher spent the night together, and Kevin Hart, supposed to be embarrassed, quickly changes the subject. Yet this one Usher is a nasty man. He has given STDs to several women, probably men also, and he has a court order against him not to spread his STD again or face jail time. Uh, he's responded to the lawsuit from the woman who claims that uh, they hooked up a couple of times this year and that she actually he gave her herpes yes. she says yes that's what she says diddy known for mentoring usher also faces allegations of mistreatment and inappropriate influence on justin bieber during their formative years it is claimed that diddy spent an extended 48 hours with justin bieber when the pop sensation was still a teenager given diddy's controversial past involving teenage boys concerns have been raised about his interactions with justin reports suggest that Diddy showcased a Ferrari to Justin and made promises of allowing him to drive it once he turned 16, despite Justin being only 15 at that time. Additionally, there are allegations that Diddy offered Justin a mansion, supposedly available to him when he turned 18. As soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna let you rock this every time you come to LA. Yeah, this gonna be yours. It's essential to highlight that there is no concrete evidence supporting these allegations, yet they do prompt inquiries into Diddy's motivations behind lavish gifts. Speculation suggests that these actions may have aimed to involve Justin in age-inappropriate activities. Stressing the importance of proper parental guidance for young celebrities, particularly in potentially vulnerable situations, becomes crucial. However, after this, his future relationships with older men such as Carl Letts raised questions. In November 2020, Vanity Fair reported that Pastor Carl Lentz, a well-known religious figure affiliated with the celebrity-frequented Hillsong Church, was terminated. The church, which has drawn in notable figures such as Kourtney Kardashian, Chris Pratt, and the celebrity couple Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber, disclosed that Lentz had officiated the baptism ceremony for the Bieber-Baldwin duo. I can just speak for my own life. God has never called me at a good time. That is exactly how you should be living right now. On November 4th, 2020, Hillsong Church issued an official statement announcing the termination of Pastor Carl Lentz. The statement referenced ongoing discussions about leadership issues, breaches of trust, and the recent disclosure of moral failures as the grounds for Lentz's dismissal. Although the statement did not provide detailed information regarding the nature of the moral failures, Lentz addressed the situation on his Instagram account. In a post featuring a photo of himself, Laura, and their three children, Lentz confessed, I was unfaithful in my marriage, the most important relationship in my life. This failure is on me, and me alone, and I take full responsibility for my actions. Despite the negative publicity surrounding Lentz, who was previously a frequent subject of tabloid headlines due to his close friendship with Bieber, the depth of their connection has become apparent. While Lentz is no stranger to having celebrity friends, his relationship with the Canadian-born pop star seems to have had a more profound impact. Okay, uh, that guy. Yep. He's amazing. He's actually annoying, Legend. let's be honest. <laughs> Most of us got one or two gifts, but yeah, Justin yeah, and John, yeah, they got 87 each. The enduring friendship between Justin Bieber and Pastor Carl Lentz traces back to approximately 2014, according to GQ. The connection originated when another pastor at Hillsong Church sought Lentz's help with a young man in need, none other than Bieber during his headline-grabbing tumultuous phase. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. In an effort to help Bieber get back on track, the pop star actually lived with Lentz and his family for a month and a half in 2014, according to GQ. During this time, there's a humorous anecdote about Bieber deciding he wants to be baptized at 2 a.m. Lentz, unable to find an available pool in New York, reached out to his friend Tyson Chandler, a seven-foot-tall NBA player for the New York Knicks, who arranged for a custom-made bath tube. Thus, Bieber was baptized in Chandler's bathtub, with Lentz conducting the ceremony. 
we've been hanging. Um, wearing supreme sweaters. Just wearing sweaters. <laughs> just living the dream. We've been living the dream, honestly. The friendship between Bieber and Lentz proved to be mutually beneficial, with Lentz contributing to the transformation of Bieber's public image and Bieber bringing significant star power to both Lentz and the church, as noted by Vox. In 2019, Lentz further solidified his role in their lives by officiating Bieber and Haley Bieber's wedding, according to the Daily Mail. We have been. What does dreams, that look like? What does that being, dream look dreams like? Are being it lived. looks like Ephesians 320, to be honest with you. However, Lentz's recent scandal has left the future of their relationship uncertain. While Baldwin has reportedly unfollowed Lentz on Instagram, Bieber has not. This thing raised the eyebrows of many people questioning their relationship. People believe that she unfollowed him after knowing the news of him baptizing Justin in a bathtub. But some also believe that she unfollowed him when he broke the news of him being unfaithful to his wife. This failure is on me, and me alone, and I take full responsibility for my actions, Lentz said in the lengthy message. I now begin a journey of rebuilding trust with my wife, Laura, and my children, and taking real time to work on and heal my own life and seek out the help that I need. I am deeply sorry for breaking the trust of many people who we have loved serving and understand that this news can be very hard and confusing for people to hear and process. However, from where it all started, Hillsong Church, an international religious institution, has been making headlines for its significant celebrity following and expansive global presence. Founded in Sydney, Australia in 1983, Hillsong has established churches in 19 countries on five continents, with an average global attendance approaching 112,000 weekly. The church, described by the New York Times as an empire and a multi-million dollar enterprise, positions itself at the intersection of Christianity and culture. A Grammy-winning music empire, along with highly produced podcasts and a TV channel. You're still a carrier of God's spirit. Brian Houston, co-founder of Hillsong, along with his wife Bobby Houston, currently holds the title of global senior pastor. Despite controversy, Houston remains an active figure in the church, engaging in book publications, sermon broadcasts, and media appearances to represent Hillsong. A notable aspect of Hillsong's strategy is to establish churches in major cities, including Los Angeles and New York City, aiming to impact influential urban centers. Music plays a pivotal role in Hillsong's platform, with the church establishing its record label, Hillsong Music Australia. Additionally, Diddy faces allegations of S misconduct and A. While these claims warrant careful consideration, they contribute to the broader narrative surrounding his alleged behavior. Former associates and colleagues have hinted at Diddy's involvement in various inappropriate activities, including unfounded accusations about his S orientation. The church garnered increased recognition through its affiliation with pop star Justin Bieber. Lentz, who first met Bieber in 2008, played a significant role in the singer's life, including overseeing his baptism. Notably, Hillsong Church's connections with other high-profile celebrities, such as Selena Gomez, Bono, Jay-Z, Nick Jonas, Haley Baldwin, Kendall Jenner, Kylie Jenner, Haley Steinfeld, Chris Pratt, and Vanessa Hudgens, have also been widely acknowledged. In response, to inquiries about Hillsong's association with celebrities, Lentz emphasized that the church welcomes individuals from the entertainment industry and believes that they, too, deserve a relationship with God. He underscored the importance of providing a space for celebrities to pray. Despite controversies and speculations, Hillsong remains a prominent force at the intersection of faith, culture, and celebrity influence. He said, people say we cater to celebrities, and I say yes, we do. Celebrities deserve a relationship with God. Celebrities deserve a place to pray. These conservative positions on social issues, coupled with rumors surrounding the church's involvement in conversion therapy and allegations of financial misuse, have drawn criticism and skepticism from various quarters. Carl once said himself, he says that if he could just show a person how to walk with Jesus, really walk with him every day, Taffy Brodesser Ackner wrote in GQ, it would be easy to resist the temptation of loving someone of your own gender. He has also rather confusingly claimed the church is welcoming, and these conspiracies proven to be difficult for Justin Bieber, because he was being seen as a 
The speculations became stronger when something obvious happened between them, and it was caught on camera, too. American singer turned born-again Christian was captured on camera, sharing a heartfelt moment with his pastor, Carl Lentz, as they exchanged a friendly kiss on the cheek. During this period, Justin also underwent a profound spiritual transformation, distancing himself from celebrity friends whose lifestyles did not align with his newfound faith. His commitment to honoring God became evident as he embarked on a cross-country tour, accompanied by his close and influential pastor, Carl Lentz, with whom he shares a deep bond. We came over with some ideas, and I feel like God's exceeded them. That's we've a had, fact. We've had Nando's. At that time, people started to believe that the church was hiding its true identity and was baptizing gays, which included Justin and Carl. As reported by Cosmopolitan, Hillsong faced another controversy when founder Brian Houston became the subject of investigation in Australia regarding a SA case involving his late father, Frank Houston. Frank, a pastor who passed away in 2004, had reportedly confessed in 2000 to S.A. A Boy many years before the establishment of Hillsong. Brian, in response, terminated his father's leadership role. However, in 2014, a royal commission into institutional responses to C.S.A. examined Brian for not reporting the A to the police upon learning of it initially. Well, I think that's a big question, and unfortunately it's been taking... 25 years for that to finally today be answered. Throughout the commission's inquiry, Houston acknowledged his father's misconduct and the pain it inflicted. Despite this, he publicly stated that the victim had requested him not to involve law enforcement. Well, I genuinely believe that if I wasn't Brian Houston from Hillsong Church, this um, charge would never have happened. There were many people who were aware of the accusations about my father. Australia's ABC News detailed that the commission identified a conflict of interest in Brian's dual roles, both personal and professional, while addressing the situation. It concluded that Houston did not adhere to proper procedures, ultimately failing the victim in handling the matter appropriately. However, people watched this incident with a changed perspective. They believed that this case involved Justin and Carl, and Carl was responsible for M. Justin, and it might be possible that Carl must have demanded financial aid to Justin and him being a kid let him do whatever he wanted to do with him. Carl is rumored to have a romantic involvement with Justin, and there's another prominent figure in the music industry allegedly linked romantically to Justin as well, Diddy. Reports and accusations have surfaced regarding Diddy and his connections with both Usher and Justin Bieber. It has been seen that Diddy has been involved in luring and making uncomfortable young artists for his own desires. This was seen in one of his meetings with the rapper Fabulous. Most people aspire to attend after parties where celebrities gather, seeking the opportunity to interact with industry insiders. Despite Fabulous having attended numerous events over the years, it seems that he believes certain parties have fallen short of the expectations set for them. You know, it's, it's a crazy hey, I'm so thing, sorry, you know so what I'm saying? Yeah, I gotta get my life together. I gotta get my life together. <laughs> So, so Fab, how was your birthday? Upon observation, Fabulous is enveloped in an evident cloud of melancholy amid the crowd. There's a perceptible weight he seems to carry, an invisible burden that evokes sympathy for his demeanor. Quietly savoring a piece of cake, he exudes an air of seclusion, hesitating to meet the eyes of those around him, suggesting a genuine unease. The presence of Diddy adds a layer of complexity to this emotional tapestry, subtly influencing Fabulous' current state of mind. The source of this rupture remains elusive. Whether rooted in a clash of artistic goals or a personal issue, one can only speculate as the truth lies deep within their shared past. Meanwhile, Diddy persists in questioning him. Fab, how was your birthday, man? <laughs> hey, was and what, and what, was your, what was your wish mm. for this year? To which Fab responded, I like vibes, you know what I mean? I like a good vibe more than like wanting for anything, or, like, you know what I mean? So I got a cool vibe. I, 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 I spend some, some of the time with my kids. As you pay close attention to Fabulous, you see that both his words and body language indicate a lot about how he is feeling at the moment. It is clear that he is consciously trying to distinguish himself from Diddy. He emphasizes his desire to be a devoted family man and stay near to his kids, expressing a newly discovered priority for the family. But I was like, yo, this, this, yeah, that's how I had one of them hoodies. Yeah. Huh? yeah, they really hate him. 
<laughs> yeah, they, like, they, they look at him as like the old hating nigga. It appears as though Fab has started a path of self-discovery, reassessing his priorities and realizing the value of preserving his relationships with his family. His decision to put his responsibilities as a loving dad first shows a profound emotional awakening driven by a desire to create deep relationships within his immediate circle. But this is not it. The New York City rapper also recently posted a series of revealing anecdotes on his Instagram story in which he discussed instances in which he ran off on his celebrity buddies while they were attending events. According to Fab, the circumstance required an Irish escape on this occasion, and it was necessary for it to occur. Not only that, he even dropped some helpful party escaping excuses to help his fans, where he suggested, you ever got peer pressured into going to the afties? You ever said you are going to the bathroom and left? Everything started when the rapper known as Ghetto Fabulous asked his fans if they, too, had ever felt forced into attending an after-party when they were at a concert of his. Fabulous said, You really want to go home or back to the room, but you don't want to be be the turn down to the turn up. Fabulous also shared this incident on her Instagram, saying, You ever got peer pressured into going to the afties? He also asked his Instagram followers, One more question. You ever said you was going to the bathroom and left? Fans were thinking about his queries when Fabulous revealed that he had a very absurd experience with Diddy, who kept Fabulous partying until the early hours of the next morning. I told Diddy I was going to the bathroom and slid once, he admitted. It was 7 a.m. and this N was still turnt. This story was all about Diddy forcing him to go to parties, which can be seen here. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and no, but me and you ain't never really party, you know? Did you just notice how Fabulous was hesitating while Diddy said he wanted to go to the party? Why? Because Fabo might have known that there is always something going wrong when Diddy is invited. And this is why Fabulous gave him a very awkward facial expression. I understand. I understand. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 you're you're okay. And Fabulous' desire to flee the scene and return to his house makes perfect sense, given that Diddy's wild partying lifestyle is well known to the public. A second rapper, Exhibit, has also come out to share his terrifying experience. After having a fantastic night at his house, Diddy brought him out clubbing, and it wasn't until later that they found out this club wasn't like any other club they'd been to before. Instead, it turned out to be a pretty blatant bar. So then we, you know, we go to the house, and then, you know, uh, he, he invited us to the house because he wanted to go to the club afterwards, right? I was like, right. okay, cool. Zibit was obviously attempting to party and have a good time at the club when someone brought to his attention the fact that the men there were kissing one another. Zibit was stunned, but he didn't give it much thought until he saw another man dancing b in the middle of the club. She pointed over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what is this? And not only this, but Zebit also hinted toward his very terrible encounter with Diddy when he got dragged into the party. Diddy has the audacity to ask his victims about the girls, too, and afterwards show them the real show that usually goes on at his parties. Hey, man, you know, the, um, that, that girl you, you know about the girl you, I was like, yeah, nigga, oh, yeah, everybody know about, you know what I'm saying, what's happening? You know, he's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. After that, he even told a peculiar tale of Diddy saying some words about Superhead. However, these revelations somehow prove that Diddy can do anything to manipulate artists. One person on the internet wrote, he said buck full crazy, as in buck wild. Poor Justin, though. Feel so sorry for these kids who were exposed to too much too quickly. I just saw a vid of Justin saying he wanted to protect Billie Eilish so she wouldn't have to go through what he went through. He got emotional. Poor kid. Something definitely happened somewhere. Another one added, It's innocent until proven guilty, but this looks sketch straight up. Usher, Beaver, Jamie Foxx speaking out, plus other allegations. What happens in the dark always comes out in the light. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.